Hi there guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. God, it feels like a lifetime ago that I sat down and did one of these videos, but uh, it feels great to be back in the saddle, so to speak. Uh, okay, before we get into this lesson, uh, just a quick heads up that it's 40% off all downloads on my website, 40%. Um, code RGSAVE40. Link is in the description box below. If you want to support me and what I do so I can make more videos like this, that's the best way to do it. Okay, let's crack on with today's lesson. I'm going to talk about dominant seventh arpeggios and how I practice them. Uh, I did do a video last year about um, horizontal arpeggios and this kind of leans in that same direction, but we're going to take it a little bit further than that video. Um, so what I like to do is I like to group these arpeggios uh, in, in terms of either pairs or uh, groups of three strings um, and, and create, um, base it on numbers of notes per string to create shapes, okay? So that's how I do it. Um, so usually when I first started practicing these arpeggios, uh, I do them in a very vertical fashion, but these days what I do is practice them horizontally. Uh, it yields some wonderful, wonderful things, wonderful sounds, and there's lots of other creative things that you can do rather than just being stuck in this one position, you know. Uh, so we're going to take the key of, well, the, uh, the chord of A dominant 7. But we're going to start here, okay. And I'm going to take the 4th, 3rd, 2nd strings and I'm going to play, in this position, A dominant 7. Like that. We don't need to concern ourselves about the outer strings. I'm just dealing with the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings. Uh, for this shape, what I'm going to do is omit the root. Well, just change it for the ninth. Why? Because it sounds awesome. Uh, but also, it's more comfortable for the left hand. Okay, so that's our first shape, and we're going to ascend all the way through diatonically, like so. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to follow the two note, one note, two note approach. So two, one, two on each string. First shape. Now we're going to move up to the next available shape, so no gaps at all. Okay, and you can pick this however you want. Next shape. Next shape. Until we get an octave. An octave higher, so. <laughs> I've changed key there. Anyway, those are the shapes that I tend to practice a lot on the inner strings. Okay, um, the next thing that I like to do is change change it up a little bit. So, inst and this is according to our um, number of notes per string I'm talking about here. So, let's take our first shape here. Okay, if I I can add an extra note on the top string. So our formula kind of is two, one, three. And we're still following our uh, A7 chord here. That would be the next shape. And this is, like I said before, once you've got a template, you can add or subtract things. Um, and it's so creative and yields some wonderful sounds. Okay, this is all diatonic as well. Sounds great. I, I added an extra note in, and I'm uh, preempting myself here. Okay, so. Hopefully you get the principle that I'm talking about here. We're just taking a template, extending it just by adding one note. Okay. 
and so on. Okay, that's a wonderful thing. Um, remember, we're just on the fourth, third, and second strings here. So we've got all the other groups of three strings to explore. Um, I'm just going to take this a little bit further. What if we add a note on the, the fourth string? So we're playing essentially three, one, three in terms of number of notes per string. <laughs> Hopefully you're following me here. So our original shape was this, two, one, two. Then we added uh, an extra note, which is diatonic to the key, uh, to, um, to this key, yeah. Um, to create three notes on the top. And then I added three on, uh, an extra note here to create three, one, three. Okay, I mean, that sounds great. And also, the important thing here is that because we're playing around that dominant seventh chord, it encapsulates, even though we've got a lot of information there because we've got a lot of notes in there, it still encapsulates the sound of that dominant chord. <laughs> You can hear it, and, and that's wonderful. That's that's great. Um, so what would we do here? That's a bit more challenging. Uh, the good thing as well is, let me also point out. Um, hope I'm not digressing too much here. Um, let me also point out that when you start adding notes like this three one three thing, um, it will challenge you with in terms of your left hand fingering. So that's another benefit. Um, with this kind of thing. So, just as an example here, we're using, this is our template, but we're adding an extra note here, and here, so we're adding the ninth and the sixth. Okay, let me just talk a little bit about fingering. When you, <laughs> when you uh, uh, keep things diatonic, it usually forces you, it usually makes it a lot more awkward to play for the left hand. So let me just give you an example here of a way you can just use the same fingering but still following the, um, the essential skeleton of the chord, so to speak. So, do you remember we added? That's diatonic to the key. However, if I just, uh, I'm lazy, which I am anyway, I'll just play the same fingering on, on the top two strings, the fourth and the second. And listen. Okay, what that gives us is a, a Lydian dominant sound. So sometimes what I'm ultimately trying to say here is that um, if you just literally um, follow a fingering, it can create some absolutely wonderful sounds. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to know what you're doing, just use your ear. If it sounds good and works, then it is. Uh, let me give you another example here. If we, if we move on to the top three strings, here. Uh, let me play it diatonic to the key. Now that is nasty for the, for the left hand. Okay, but if I, like I said before, if I'm lazy and just use the third and fourth here and just keep it the same, but still outlining our dominant seventh, listen to this. That sounds amazing. So ultimately what I'm saying is don't limit yourself to just st sticking to diatonic stuff. Um, it's good practice for the left hand, but you don't have to do that. Um, just by keeping the same fingering, you can create some wonderful sounds. Anyway, I think I should wrap up because I've been rambling on for too long. So, uh, as I said before, link in description box below for all my website lessons, 40% off, RG save 40, so get on it and support your boy. All right, I will speak to you soon. Cheers, guys.